CLS 101. I'm Chris Medley. I'm the Global Project Manager installing MPLS suites at 374 sites, two suites per site. Do the math. It's a lot. Next slide, please. Oh, I can do it myself. Or not. Yeah, so I am. Uh, I think I got it. Right, okay, oh, makes sense. All right, so yeah, obviously I didn't have any time to prepare because I was in the wrong place. So again, apologies. My network is better than I am, so we're all good there. <laughs> so disclaimer, I'm not, uh, I'm, uh, not uh, uh, endorsing anybody, not doing anything wrong. This is a lot of fun. I have a lot of fun, and this is what we do. So again. Oh, there we go. So what is MPLS? MPLS, as many know, there's nothing new. Uh, RFC 3031, January 2001, describes MPLS. So why in the world am I selling it to you now like it's something brand new? And it's this project is nothing about MPLS. It's more about convergence and, and uh, all, the, all, the, all the things that MPLS is only a tool in. So unfortunately, my project is named MPLS. I, I tried to get some cool names, IP transport, uh, determined packet, something like that. But instead, I'm MPLS. And that's just pretty much what I got to live with. But really, MPLS is only one tool in the set of tools that do provide the, the, the multi service network that, that I'm building today. So what we can provide through the network, we can provide uh, layer three services. A Nippernet VRF is, is one thing. It's, it's basically a virtual router. One, one kind of misconception is, is that what I'm installing, they're not really routers. They're platforms that routers are in. So while before we, we put out a different router for every different service and every different accreditation boundary, what we have now is really a group of virtual routers inside a single platform. So I can provide uh, layer three services such as Nippernet, VRF, and those kind of things. I can provide uh, uh, any kind of a community of interest network. Um, basically, I could replace a customer edge router in, in the box, and we're actually looking at doing that in the future or building a full network for the customer. So along with layer three, and one thing about uh, uh, MPLS is it, it provides, it replaces both IP and transport, and, and it has the best functions of both. I have the, the preset switched paths like transport, and then I also have the ability to go layer three like an IP router. So in the whole layer three in the transport realm, um, whereas before layer three, I can look like a big router to the customer in this transport, I can look like a switch. So I can, uh, one of the best things about this is you don't have to do any routing or signaling with the customer. Basically, I package up the customer's traffic at one side in somewhere in the Pacific. I package it up and I deliver it untouched and un, basically I don't have to do anything signaling with that customer and I can deliver it in Missouri if I need to. So that's, that's back to kind of what the high point of of being a transport network is, is I don't actually have to signal with the customer. I don't have to break my or their accreditation boundaries. I can just carry their traffic without looking at it and drop it off at the distant end. So, um, and really what it boils down to is a lower demand on transport. And whereas before, like I was saying, we have a different router, a different piece of metal for every accreditation boundary uh, now I can take those and uh, those very same services and put them all on one platform. And it's a, a common standardized platform glo globally, so I don't have problems with different levels of, of technology. I'm, I'm able to put up a circuit end to end without having to, um, to cross any boundaries or, or, or break it up. And, and also, like, if you look at the, on the left, if you have a customer that's, like, say, on the, the JPE or, or on the CPE and they need traffic, 
maybe that there's not enough bandwidth that's allocated to that. Uh, in the old, in the old legacy setting, I would have to actually go out, do some magic, move around interfaces, and increase the bandwidth availability. Um, whereas now, we can dynamically actually switch traffic from one network to another, switch bandwidth from one network to another, without having to go out having so many touch points. And then obviously, I know that uh, spaces in uh, a lot of facilities, limited spaces, I'm taking all these different pieces of equipment out and replacing it with, with essentially a single platform, putting two pieces of equipment diverse in different, in different buildings when I'm able to, uh, to get that full diversity with diverse paths and everything else. So really, it's transport bandwidth. Uh, this site could either be an optical site where I have more demands on the left, more demands on optical, more allocated bandwidth, or at a leased site where I've actually, each one of these is a billable lease that, uh, and then as we move to the right, fewer leases uh, and larger leases gives you more bandwidth for essentially the same cost or less cost. So really the whole network convergence going from going from those those many pieces of metal, many chassis on the left side, moving to the objective uh, on the right side with that dual, dual JPE architecture. This only accounts for the IP devices that are being converged. What is not accounted for here is the fact that the datums, which is already gone, the DISA ATM network, that uh, a lot of that traffic moved to MPLS. It's also not accounting for the Promina uh, bandwidth that's moving now has already started to move, and it doesn't account for uh, MSPP bandwidth that's coming off. So, so really, I'm even, we're even getting more efficiency than the boxes that are shown here. So everything over IP, people have talked about everything over IP for years, and really what we're doing here is not everything over IP, it's everything over MPLS. Um, we are, uh, the applications are IP based, the virtual routers in the, in the MPLS chassis are IP based, but the whole MPLS as it is, is all, it's all layer two, it's all ethernet based. Um, the, the packet switching and everything is a lot faster and uh, higher bandwidths are able to be achieved there. MPLS, uh, there's a test on this in a couple of minutes. Um, MPLS is uh, basically the reason, one of the reasons why it's so fast is unlike a router, you have a longer, you ha you'll have a longer header on a routed network and uh, every, every, at every router, the router has to make a decision about the path. Well, as I said before, MPLS takes one of the highlights of transport and uh, has predetermined paths, basically switched paths and the, the routing, in the, the header is only 20 bits versus the longer ethernet header. So what, what you'll have here is a much faster, much faster switching time, and it is switching and not routing, a much faster time uh, between, uh, from box to box, whereas a, on, a, on a routed network, you would actually be much longer, a much longer time. We're talking nanoseconds here, but it really does make a large difference when you're talking about these routers having terabit backlinks. So what we're looking for in, in equipment, we're looking for, tr for multi-vendor environment. We're looking, these routers have to have, they have to have a set, sor uh, set, set of functionality. They have to have common trends, technology levels. We've got to be interoperable. We've got to be able to move those circuit emulation packets between uh, the, different, the different routers in different theaters. Um, we have a terabit backplane, four terabits on the backplane of that router. Uh, we have 100 gigabit link capabilities on, on every one of the pieces of equipment that we're putting out there up to 100 gigabits. Um, high density interfaces, of course, if I'm gonna replace all those other boxes, we're going to have to have a lot of customers plugged in. We have cards that allow 80 ports on a single card and then circuit emulation. The, f the, the fact of the matter is TDM is not gone yet. We're still gonna have TDM for a while. We discourage circuit emulation uh, for one reason, because any customer that's doing circuit emulation is not getting the full benefits of MPLS. 
and for another reason is it's kind of wasteful. As I was saying, you have a four terabit backplane. You have uh, some of the routers have 800 gig slots, so 800 gigabits available in a slot. To take a full slot out of a router and serve a customer in OC3 is really detracting a lot from the DISN. So we can do circuit emulation. Uh, we're mainly doing circuit emulation at a T1 level, not at, 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 at every every different interface that can be brought. And that's simply because of efficiencies. And as I was saying, if somebody does circuit emulation, they're not getting that full MPLS experience that they deserve. And, and that kind of goes to the interface types. Um, with different interfaces, you got OC3 interfaces and all the other sonnet interfaces and then all the different, if, if you had to serve every different interface, you would need a much larger chassis or you had to go back to multiple chassis in order to, in order to serve every single kind of interface. So really the, the idea here is to shrink that, uh, that catalog of, of different interfaces that we provide and let that, uh, and then let, let, let us use those 80 port cards in order to get that maximum number of ports. Um, sub interface use is, an, is another big deal. Um, I have one customer I'm working with right now that has six different circuits to their site. They're not at a Disney site, but they have leases into Disney sites. They have six different leases that they pay for now. And it's actually four different Disney services. So some of them are, have diverse connectivity and some of them do not. Uh, what they're doing now or what they're moving towards is they're putting with their own device, they're doing an MPLS path into, into the actual DISN MPLS and instead of having those six leases in the future, they were able to bring all of their services and more services in on those single larger pipes and uh, saving them money and time and of course saving us interfaces because every one of those interfaces would have been some kind of DISN box and it would have been money f out of the DISN. So this, this doing it this way is more efficient for both the customer and for the, the overall DISN. And we have to stay away, if we're gonna be interoperable, we have to stay away from vendor features. Uh, just because it's brand new uh, and shiny on one box, it, we shouldn't be using it uh, because we gotta, we gotta be fully interoperable. Um, and so that's, that's really the way we're gonna go. And I have both lanyards here to prove it, so. Only two thus far. So what am I doing? As I say, 370, about 375 sites uh, around the DISN, two routers per site. I'm ahead of schedule, under budget. I'm sure everybody in this place can say that. Uh, and uh, we're, actually, we're actually on track to have the full network installed this year and activated soon thereafter. And I believe that's all of my slides. Yeah. So, any questions, anyone? Heckles? I invited a lot of hecklers here, but they failed. All right, that's all I have then. Thank you very much. Bye.